there must be something really weird happening in Virginia and its education system. Virginia Democrats have claimed that teaching communism is offensive against people from Asia. And this Whoops. is, I think, one of the most, <laughs> one of the worst excuses in the history of excuses. So just how does this sound? Just Te be before we go... the evils of communism is offensive to Asians. Okay, before we uh, dig deeper into this, you can visit our website and you can read the magnificent article by Harry Robinson, The Anatomy of the Communist. Um, so uh, this is something that uh, is wor wor uh, well worth checking because mm. Harry is doing an amazing job in portraying the psychology behind communists. And I think that this article should be read uh, and... Uh, yeah, that's a good one, that one. It, yeah. It's also very popular on the website. I've seen it has done mm. tremendously well. Mm. So it might be worth checking it. Now, I want to say because uh, I did a segment some time ago about the education in Virginia. It was about a month ago. And I, th I, I must say that um, Virginia remind, seems to remind me of a plot in a Stephen King novel where you have a, a town where things mostly function, but then you have a new character co coming in. Right. Uh, you know, the, the, this time it's the woke ideologue and someone suddenly everyone starts acting yeah. and reacting weirdly. You know, I, I, th I think we need a new term. You know, you know how governments have invented this term disinformation or malinformation to describe information that's actually true but they yeah. just don't like it or it's or it, it goes against their narrative i think i think we need a term for education like dis diseducation or maleducation because that's basically what a lot of america well a lot of british schools as well but certainly from what i've seen most of the american schools they're, they're involved in maleducation yeah, uh, w would you say that dumbing down is uh or, well, i mean it's, it's, it's gone well beyond dumbing down into just full-blown communist indoctrination um, and you, you'll see precisely why this is not uh, over the top. Now, let us read this article by Helen Rayleigh. Virginia Democrats recently voted no on a bill that would have required schools to teach about the danger of communism and the suffering of its victims after a teacher's union claimed such a curriculum would incite anti-Asian hate. So we have a teacher's union claiming that teaching the dangers of communism would somehow offend Asian Americans. And we have Virginia Democrats actually thinking that that's a good idea. Okay, spe and speaking, that they should, yeah. Speaking about Asians on the receiving end of communism, I've, I've traveled to, to, to many countries, in Cambodia, one of them. And in, in Phnom Penh, there's a museum that you can go to. I think it's called the Tao Shlong, some, something, something like that. Um, and it's basically this um, repurposed school that was used as a, as a torture and execution center. And, and they got infested by the Khmer Rouge and the communism yeah. ideals. And, and you can go and see this, the steel metal frame beds welded to the floor that they used to bring people in on almost a sort of conveyor belt system, chain them to this bed and torture them to extract information out of them. And basically in order to, in order to end your suffering, you needed to give them three names. And then of course they would then go and get those three people and they would give you three names in this. So, I mean, Asian, I and mean, that's just one example. That's kind of, there are many other examples of how Asian peoples have been horrifically victimized yeah. by communism. It is not, it is not hate because, because <laughs> they suffered it. It's just not pure nonsense. It's Absolutely. pure nonsense. And this is a, a good occasion to show how masks fell off and how woke ideologues here are, they are trying yeah. to create a very paternalistic framework and they're trying to tell us that we shouldn't offend people and they also want to try to control what counts as offense even yeah. if it's completely ridiculous and that is why they that is also why they think that common sense is to be we sh they should have so well, it's they should they, attack these common have sense an extremely low resolution a low resolution view of the world which yeah. is basically everything is is white man bad um, and and hate. I mean, that's 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 all they can see. So that every issue they have to interpret through that lens, and, and thus we get this. I continue the article from the article. Okay, the bill HB eighteen sixteen requires Virginia's governor to recognize November seven as Victims of Communism Day. 
all public elementary and secondary schools in the Commonwealth to honor victims of communism on this day and teach a curriculum about the evils of communism. A bill like this is long overdue because communism is responsible for the deaths of 100 million people in the 20th century. These victims had names, faces, unfulfilled hopes and dreams. They were husband, husbands, wives, daughters, sons, uncles, aunties, grandparents or grandchildren. In communist China alone, an estimated 30 million people were starved to death during the Great Chinese Famine. The victims included my baby uncle, who was born in 1959 and died in my grandmother's arms. Additionally, I lost two granduncles, a granduncle and her family of five, and my maternal great-grandmother. We the living owe it to those victims not to forget them and treat their deaths as mere statistics. Instead, we must honor them by remembering how they lived and died and passing important historical lessons down to future generations. So the atrocity we experience will never happen again. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, I think, a person. The, the author is from China. And she... She is in uh, the United States at the moment, and she, she lives there. And according to woke ideologues, her chi children being taught about the evils of communism would be an offense mm -hmm. to them and her. This is beyond... It's, it's mad. This is, yeah. I mean, I mean the, the obvious connection is that she wants to promote communism uh, and, and is just using what is the in thing at the moment to shut things down that you don't like is by calling it racist yeah you know why can't i wish we could start calling taxes racist and get them shut down like that no, no one likes paying taxes <laughs> okay um as a survivor of communism i'm greatly troubled by survey after survey showing that more american youth prefer communism and its close cousin socialism over free market capitalism i don't blame these young people but i fault our nation's education system for failing to teach them the evils of communism slash slash socialism. Okay, but okay, this is this is a bugbear of mine. We do not have free market capitalism. What what we have is socialism being sold as free market capitalism. So if you if you tell the kids that what we currently have is free market capitalism, of course they're going to rebel against it because it's it's broken. But also, wouldn't you say that the kind of society that they're describing is much worse than the the one we we are living now because we still yeah. have some institutions well, worth we're, defending. We're, we're on the road to it anyway. Yeah. So, okay. Historian George Santayana warned, those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Therefore, I applaud a bill like HB 1816 that requires public elementary and secondary schools in Virginia to commemorate all victims on November 7, the Victims of Communism Day, and teach their students about the evils of communism. Yet, Virginia's largest teachers' union opposed HB 1816 with an absurd claim that teaching about the dangers of communism and honoring its victims would incite anti-Asian hate because out of the five current communist countries, four of them, China, Laos, North Korea and Vietnam, are in Asia. Since the Democrats are beholden to teachers' unions, it is unsurprising that Virginia Democrats rejected HB 1816. Sorry, this makes absolutely no sense. Well, there's more than four communist countries. I mean, there's, well, I mean, LA is, a, California is, is, I suppose, is a state, but there's um, uh, Canada, that's, that's a communist country. But how would honoring the victims of communism incite anti-Asian hate? Yeah. They, they really did not, uh, they, they didn't even do, they, okay, woke ideologues have got high with their own supply. <laughs> they, they didn't even do basic homework in order to, to say this. No, they did not. And, and it's really sad that they are a teacher's union. Hmm. Anyway, okay. The claim that teaching communism would offend Asians is offensive to all Asian Americans. Not teaching the evils of communism dishonors millions of victims and does a disservice to all students in Virginia. In Virginia, If Virginia's teachers' union and the state's Democrats sincerely want to address anti-Asian hate, an excellent place to start is to end their war on merit in schools. Yeah. And, I must, and I must say that uh, I did a segment about a month ago, a, a month and a half, and uh, talking about some equity policies that were... Uh, implemented in schools yeah and 
it was very weird. And let us see why Demo Virginia Democrats and woke ideologues think, think that they can speak for Asian Americans. If we could move to the next, uh, to this hyperlink, we see this. This was a person who was, um, who, who was paid, I think, roughly half a million dollars to implement the, by the by the superintendent of Virginia to implement this goal in schools. And this writes, the equity imperative, equitable access, equal outcomes, equitable access to resources and opportunities that guarantee fair, just and affirming experiences and produce equal outcomes for every student without exception. And in order to just to remember what uh so equal outcomes for every student without exception yes and well, actually what's the point of turning up then you might as well just give them all a's yes and let us also remember what they did and tie it also with with uh tomorrow today's uh present topic if we move to the next article uh this was published about a month ago and it was talking about northern virginia and i just read a few paragraphs from the text. The National Merit Scholarship Program is a competition of 1.5 million students based on their scores on the preliminary standard achievement test, National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Test. Commented students rank in the top 3% while semi-finalists test in the top 1%. It's an achievement that can make a difference on a college or scholarship application, but the kids who weren't told they were National Merit winners or were told too late, couldn't include it on their application. Given that the program leaves notifications up to the individual schools, it's possible that all these failures were bureaucratic snafus. But the context offers a less generous reading. Public education in Fairfax County has become the front line for an equity agenda that has hardened into a war on achievers who are disproportionately Asian American. As a federal judge pointed out in 2022, in a case contesting Thomas Jefferson School's new admissions policy, the Fairfax County School Board eliminated the merit-based entrance exam to make room for African-American and Hispanic students by reducing the number of Asian Americans. In that sense, it works. So Democrats here who support the woke agenda and the teachers union, they cannot pretend to speak in favor of Asian Americans. I, I saw a tweet just, um, I think it was yesterday, it was on Stanford University, of their latest intake, only 22% are white. Yeah. Of, of, uh, it's, and, it's and, a and less number. than half of that, a lot less than half of that will be white men, of course. So white men are going to be something like, you know, between 8 and 10% of Stanford's intake, despite being 35% of the population. And, and Asians get it even worse. They're even more scaled back because they have the misfortune of being a bit bright. The point is that the, I think that the though this shows woke agenda in its complete insanity mm. it tries to create division where there isn't necessarily any and it tries to foster a victim mentality to people who are who they they don't need it no one needs no one needs this mentality but mm. why should they go to uh, asian americans and tell them that you know just commemorating memory uh, commemorating the evils of communism and your uh, loved ones who were lo uh, who were victimized by communism it yeah. uh, can incite anti-asian hate yeah i mean well, well they're not worried about anti-asian hate are they by whom I mean, they're, they're, they're worried about anti-communist hate that's, by that's whom? what they're worried about yeah who yeah. is going to have anti-asian uh yeah. sentiments of anti-Asian hatred towards anti-Asian people on the basis of commemorating communism. Mm. Anyway, I think that's complete insanity, I think. And mm. uh, I think we should again talk about common sense and talk a bit about why we should read history. And I think that in a way, it we, we have some really basic ideas about this. I think mm. I'll just list five. Care for truth. Remember those who died so that we could enjoy the liberties we enjoy right now. Understanding the human conditions and being more able to navigate in the world. Maturing and becoming more realistic. Becoming a more informed and critically minded citizen. Right. Do, uh, do, do modern universities achieve that? I think not. And they want to do the exact opposite. They do not care about the truth. 
they view language in a completely instrumental way. That is why they push forward the, all these emancipation theories. We have people saying, okay, I'll just think of a group. I'll present this group as being, uh, you know, victimized and oppressed. Mm -hmm. And I will address members of that group and try to foster victim, victim mentality to them. Mm -hmm. And I will also pre present myself as a... Liber as their liberator and as someone who speaks in favor of their emancipation. Mm -hmm. And also what they are doing is that they are pushing, putting forward the idea that anyone who disagrees with anything that comes with along with this new way of viewing things, mm -hmm. uh, this uh, vi victim narrative, the, this narrative of victimization, will be interpreted as someone who is actually attacking people's humanity. So there, there, there is zero concern about truth. There is concern about pushing forward ad ad emancipation agendas and na victimization narratives. Also, they do not care about the past, and they think that the notion of tradition is inherently problematic and that the, the entirety of Western civilization and culture should be destroyed. Mm. And th that this is why, instead of looking at a sort of measured approach towards tradition and to say that some institutions work, some others do not work, we see a blind rejection uh, of the entirety of Western culture. So th we are not talking about people who approach their topic in a measured way. Mm. Um, not quite. Also... They purposefully want their followers and students who they indoctrinate not to be critically minded citizens. Why? Because they want to manipulate their emotions. The thing is, uh, history, as we said before, and political history is, particularly political history, is a comparative science. It's not just an issue of saying something doesn't work, is something doesn't work, there are all these alternatives, this is the best alternative. The other alternatives are not the best The best ones. We should stick with the best alternative. That's mm. the more realistic outlook to it. But I think that what children are not given by this kind of education is the ability to sharpen their critical skills as well as mm. the raw material to use their, critic, to use their critical skills upon. Because you can you can be let's say very smart in the sense that you can be really good at uh, really you know quick witted but if you have zero historical knowledge to apply your critical skills the outcome isn't going to be terribly impressive will it mm. so i want to say that there is an w when we have people who are educated into not being uh, critically minded we have a social sphere, we have a public sphere where there is no significant dialogue. Mm. That's why we need another term for for because it's not education, it's maleducational, dis diseducational, yes. whatever it is, yes. but we need a new term for it, clearly. We have people who think that their feelings are yes. the antenna to that connects them to reality and that they are infallible. Yes. And I want to say that the issue of feelings is that Teaching his, uh, th there is this idea that teaching history is going to offend the feelings of people and it's going to uh, prevent classrooms from being safe spaces. History is not supposed to make you feel comfortable. History is supposed no. to make you feel unsettled in a controlled environment. Well, I've read history books that have made me feel utterly sick, queasy. Yes. yes. I mean... <sighs> yes. I mean, well, I mean, I could, I could start listing examples, but I mean, absolutely horrific stuff in history, and you read it because you're supposed to learn from it. Yes, it's not a matter of liking what yeah, you're yeah. reading or a matter of uh, safeguarding your emotions. It's a matter of mm. understanding things and understanding uh, how to improve, and also understanding how to improve your society. So you cannot improve unless you think that there is a reason for improving. That is why they literally push forward this kind of subjectivism based on feeling because it it communicates the message that there is no nothing beyond what you're, you think is true 
out there. Mm. Your emotions are infallible guides to reality. There is no reason for improvement. And also, your emotions are infallible guides to moral insight. You also, you cannot improve unless you know the direction you have to take to improve. And I, I must say this because there, we very frequently have leftists and woke ideologues who challenge and criticize the establishment or whatever they present as being the establishment or a, an aspect of that or a part of that establishment. But they're not putting something forward. They focus on what they call to be injustice mm -hmm. or, you know, bad, uh, you know, policies, but they're not telling us why their suggested policies are to be preferred. And actually, they're not to be preferred. We should prefer anything. We, sh we, shouldn't, we shouldn't want to, to have uh, communism. Well, and that's why they're so cle uh, keen to to close down those uh, those discussions of, um, of of history. Yes, and also it's not just to shut down the discussion. It's all it's also to present anyone who who criticizes communism as being someone who engages in hate speech against whom again. Mm. You never know. But the goal is to create a classroom like the following. So instead of teaching history and educating the citizens of tomorrow and educating critically minded persons who are going to uh, safeguard the uh, their country, we have classrooms of this sort. Half of them should be in a zoo, not a classroom. <laughs> okay. So let us uh, move uh, forward to the, this tweet from uh, Helen Raleigh. She says, this is absurd. In China alone, more than 40 million people died between 1946 to 76 due to communism, including some of my family members. Not teaching communism in the name of protecting Asians is a gross injustice to victims and insult to all Asian Americans. And... We have the response uh, on top of it. We must teach history. No, not that history. The reasoning that anti-communism is anti-Asian is really, really flimsy. By that logic, anti-slavery lessons are anti-Muslim, since the majority of remaining slavery is practiced in the Muslim world. It's not just the remaining slavery. Slavery throughout history has been a Muslim-dominated trade. The, the, um, the, the slave trade into um, uh, the Arab world from Africa was many, many times out of the transatlantic slave trade, but that's not taught either because it's not useful. And I don't know if the members of, the, of Virginia's teachers' union, at least that union that we we're yeah. talking about, um, are aware of this. Because Virginia's got some history on this, haven't they? Because that's um, Glenn Youngkin. Yes. Who, who came in. I mean, he, he, I mean, he came in because he was pushing back on... Oh, some aspect. Was it CRT or some other? I mean, there's so much nonsense That's in American schools. You lose track of it. But, I yeah. mean, he pushed back on some aspect of this. And clearly yeah. this is this is quite a base bill yeah. requiring the teaching of communism. But um, obviously he's going to get some pushback. But, um, you know, and carry I think, on, sir. I think we should end with a video with Yeon Mi Park. Um, let, let us watch. A North Korean defector issuing a stark warning about woke ideology in American classrooms. Yeon Mi Park defected from the regime as a young teen before seeking refuge in the United States. The Columbia University alumna described the intolerance in its classrooms as shocking, saying that woke ideology is leading the country down the path of North Korea if we don't reverse course. Joining us now is Yanmi Park, author of the new book, While Time Remains, A North Korean Defector's Search for Freedom in America. Yanmi, welcome to you. Thank you. And you just graduated two years ago. You are getting this look at America since you arrived here in 2015, yes. and specifically in the classroom. What has your experience been? What have you seen? And, and what is your warning? Yeah, so when I came to America having no idea, I thought somehow this was a free country where individuals can have different thoughts and opinions. When I started uh, university at Columbia University, I couldn't believe because they were exactly saying the same things that my North Korean teachers taught me in that the North Korean remarkable. classroom. That is remarkable. Yeah. What specifically? Can you give us some sort of idea of what you were hearing 
inside the classroom、mm-hmm. that leads you to say this? So they said all the problems that we have in the world is because of the greedy capitalism,、mm-hmm. and also the Western civilization and white men. That was the exact same thing that my North Korean teachers told me that all the evils was because of USA and the capitalism. And at Columbia, professors are saying the only only solution to all these problems is a communist revolution. I must say it is very、yeah. worrying when we have a North a North Korean defector、yeah. uh, who comes back to who comes. I mean, it's, it's not just him. I mean, I, I I know people again who were who grew up in um um you know the other side of the Iron Curtain. Yeah, and and. That, They all say the same thing. They see the same process playing out in in our public discourse、yeah. today.、Um, I mean, on, on on basically every issue, you know, we we are in the midst of a a communist a cultural revolution. That、yeah. that is what is happening in the West, and only some of us can see it. Yes, and、uh, there are some who question this, and、uh, I think they should watch this video. And let us watch the final part of it. It's just a minute. Can you give us a little bit of an idea what that was like for you, defecting? Yeah, so I was escaping from North Korea at 13. I did not even know what freedom was. I was literally escaping for a bowl of rice. We were starving. When I arrived in China, I was sold as a sex slave for $20. And they sold my mother for sixty-five dollars.、Mm. And while we are speaking right now, there are three hundred thousand North Korean girls in China who are modern-day slaves.、Mm. So I've been asking everybody that I met in Hollywood, in mainstream and big tech, like you keep they keep saying that they are denouncing slavery. That slavery is wrong, and they say that you know silence is violence. So I've been asking them, can you speak up for these women who are victimized? Their organs are harvested out of them、mm. under CCP. And all these people told me they said, as if I'm some clueless person. They're all making money out of CCP. Nobody in America wants to stand up for those North Korean people. So, yeah,、um, she's talking about the double standard. Okay, that、uh, Democrats and the the Hollywood mainstream culture and big tech they have. And I think it's it's important. Well, they're, they're one and the same, aren't they? The Democrats, communism is is all a, it's all a form of evil.、Yeah. So I think the only antidote to this can be reading history, or at least involve involves reading history and remembering what it is that we are being、uh, bombarded with, and you know questioning it. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters dot com to get access to all the premium content that's on the site. Such as the premium articles, this one on Cambridge's colossal lack of judgment and Eton's woke mess, with an audio track for silver and gold tier listeners, of course. If you'd like to find out what else is being put out, it's on Getter at lotuseaters underscore com on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.